Hey guys, what's going on? It's Big Pasta TV here, and we're coming at you live today with another quick Scarlet Monastery boost guide. We're going to cover all four of the Scarlet Monastery instances, even though there's probably only two you should be concerned with, but just a quick disclaimer, you're probably going to need Figurine of the Colossus. I'm going to be using it in this video just because most of these pulls are designed to pull the whole instance with the boss, one pull, and bring the loot back to the boosties at the start. So if you don't have it already, Go to Hellfire Peninsula, get into the Shattered Halls, Normal or Heroic, and kill Kargath over and over and over again until you get the figurine of the Colossus Trinket. It is so good for pally boosting and makes a lot of boosts doable with not that much gear. Much easier to farm that one piece than it is to farm all of the rest of the gear. So, if you don't have that trinket, go get the trinket. Let's get started in the Scarlet Monastery Graveyard. So the first thing you're going to do is just move your boosty up outside the Inquisitioner room and then continue to pull everything in here with rank 1 consecrates and rank 1 seal of righteousness. Just judge the righteousness on whatever target you can on cooldown, drop the rank 1 on cooldown, swing at shit when you don't have cooldown, just pull everything. You're not taking any damage. The only problem I ran into with this boost, because I was originally just going to go all the way up the left side, pull everything up to the boss, and then all the way back down the right side, but we had a little bit of reset issues, and that's why I'm dropping these rank 1 consecrates sometimes when it doesn't look like they're pulling mobs. It's just to keep everything engaged so I don't have those reset issues that I was dealing with, but um, it's not that mana taxing, so I just run through, I pull both sides all the way up to the last boss, and then when you trigger the last boss, it's actually going to pull everything in there. The only thing you have to be kind of careful about here is all of the stuff that's in your way. You can use exorcisms to try and get some of the stuff in the corners, but like if you have to stretch too far out, there's just a lot of little stuff that you could run into while you're side strafing. There's a lot of fences, a lot of gravestones, so like just be careful of that. Use your exorcisms to get the stuff in the very far corners because you don't want to have to go all the way into the corner for that, but like the other thing is just make sure even if you're in the middle of the room just keep dropping those rank one consecrates because like i said the resets became an issue i was never really able to get around it without just keeping the mobs engaged as long as i could and then you're even going to see after we pull the boss here it looks like there were a couple mobs that reset but we retained probably 95 percent of the mobs but just maintain your strafe the whole time that you're going down here, you don't have to worry about pulling all this stuff. It's all going to pull from the social, from the stuff behind you. Exorcism the boss. Continue strafing all the way back out of the tomb. And now we're just going to try and go clean up everything that either reset or we didn't get the first time. That guy, I don't know what that guy was doing. That guy was just chilling there. That guy might have been a reset. This guy might have stayed there the first time around. It's kind of hard to tell because the first time around there's a lot more stuff. But either way, it looks like we've got just about everything there. So we're going to go all the way back down the staircase towards the Inquisitioner's room. And this is going to be well within boost range for all the mobs. And the boosties are going to be able to go in here and just loot all the stuff. If you're doing these boosts five runs in a row, unless you have a repair bot, you're probably going to run out of inventory space. And even if, it, if, <clears throat> even if you have a repair bot, you might get more people involved in the boost just by advertising it with free loot and at the end of the day they're giving you the gold in your inventory it's just saving you a trip to the vendor if you can sell these things it's better than looting your number might end up being a little bit different than this number but if you do this correctly you should end up with right around 67 mobs in just under five minutes as you head over to the scarlet monastery library now the thing about Cathedral is it's relatively easy from a damage taken perspective. Once again, no real threat except for the Gallants that stun. You're just going to keep rank 1 uh, Consecrating and rank 1 Seal of Righteous saying just pulling everything all the way through. But the biggest reason that this instance is a headache is just because of the reset issues. Basically, after you pull everything in this courtyard, there's going to be a, a hallway and then an additional hallway. This first hallway after the courtyard is no real problem, but the hallway after that, literally everything just resets no matter what you do. Half of the mobs in this instance will just always reset. So there's really no reason to come in here unless, of course, you need the key to get into Armory and Cathedral, which does happen, or if you want to farm it on a different tune that you have, whatever. This is the most effective way I've done it to get the most mobs you possibly can plus kill the last boss but like literally every single one of these diviners and the little monks and all these guys in all these rooms they all reset no matter how long you keep them engaged the, div the diviners actually mana burn you too during the kill phase so this is also the most annoying kill phase and that's just completely separate from the reset issues but if you do need to get in here and get the key 
maybe you want the uh, the robes or the blade off the last boss. It's the same thing, you just run all the way to the last boss's room, you pull them, try to keep as much stuff as engaged as you can, but the reason that I included this in the video and the footage, and you're going to want to bubble right here just to get these last few packs, you're going to take a lot of hits here, and even a potential stun from the Gallant, so make sure that you have a Swiftness Potion ready just to get out of there if that happens. But you're going to see that this room we just pulled all this stuff in, pretty much half of the stuff reset, right? So you're going to see in this room that we definitely pulled every single every single thing reset. Literally every single thing reset in this room. So it's just going to be a headache getting all that stuff, but you can re-engage it, come all the way back to this first hallway, you're within range of the boosties to give them all the XP that you're going to get from killing these mobs, but you're going to be oom um the whole entire time you do it. I actually use my lay on hands coming up here in a second just to get mana back to get one more constant grade off. And then you're just waiting on mana potion cooldowns. I sped the footage up as much as I could. But like honestly guys, if you're just boosting for XP, there's pretty much no reason to ever come into the library. This, it's just such a headache compared to the other three. Honestly, it's questionable whether you should even ever go into Graveyard. The real bread and butter in this boost is going to be the Armory and the Cathedral, but you can't get into the Armory or the Cathedral without the key from library. So if you do ever have to come in here and you are boosting, this is a potential way that you could market it. You can give them this loot, it's straight through the courtyard, it's safe, you can get the boss loot if it's on free-for-all or if they just want to come over here and get it. But if you want the key, I kid you not, there's actually going to be even more resets behind me. Like, if I walk back to the boss room right now with the boosties, I'm basically going to have to kill, like, three more packs and escort them all the way there to get the key. So, like, there is really just no... It, 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 no small amount that I can talk about how much of a pain in the ass it is to do this instance. If you can stay out of here, do it. It's not worth doing from an XP perspective or a gold perspective. But if you need the key, this is the best way I've found out how to do it, at least thus far. And just so we have an accurate number on the XP tally, if your resets went anything like they did in this recording, you should be adding about 66 mobs total to the tail tally, bringing you up to 133 in just under 11 or 12 minutes. Hey guys, it's Big Boss 92 I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and if you're enjoying the video and find it helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's 100% free and extremely helpful to content creators. Thanks again, let's get back to the video. So after you head out of the library, if you decide to do it, you're going to take an immediate right and head into the armory. So the armory is still going to be relatively easy, but you are going to start taking a little bit damage, a little bit of damage. The mobs are higher level and they have a little bit more mechanics, but the big thing is hair rod, right? All your boosties that are wearing male leather, they want the two-handed axe, whatever. They're all going to want you to kill a Herod, so this is a valuable thing for you to be able to bring to the table if you're doing the armory boost. And once again, you kind of need the trinket to do it this way because you are going to be bringing pretty much the whole instance back with you. But we're going to speed up the video here just for a second because you're not actually going to pull anything with you ideally along the way. You might end up pulling a couple things just by accident or incidentally that can't be avoided. That's fine. There's a reset spot. It's really, the idea is you just want to have as few things on you as possible the entirety of the time through to Herod's room. So you just run all the way through, making sure that you don't pull anything that you don't have to. Right there, that one's pretty much unavoidable, so you can see all of this stuff. Follow me. These boxes over here, you can just jump up. LOS the corner. It's going to take a hot like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, but as long as you remove whatever you're targeting, like untarget everything, just stand on the boxes, you'll get out of combat, you can jump over again. There's some patrols that are going to make this awkward. You really don't have to wait for them. As long as you only have like one or two things on you, you should be able to open this door relatively easily. Jump down, pull Herod, and this is where the real pull starts. So we're going to slow it back down and wander all the way back up around the circle. You're going to have to take a couple of hits from these guys here, but nothing too consequential. You shouldn't need to use a Swiftness Potion. Just use your Rank 1 Judgments accordingly and your Rank 1 Righteousnesses. Everything should body pull behind you with the exception of when these corners start coming up. This guy right here, I'm pretty sure, also doesn't body pull. But you're going to see just a lot of triangle packs, a lot of double packs. You just want to keep pulling the mob that's the closest to the wall or the furthest away from you in all those packs. Just to make sure they all aggro. There could be a group of three, but like you could pull two and one of them won't aggro. They're not all just set packs of three, like if you pull one, all three of them pull. So you kind of have to do, do a little bit of guesswork or have a really, really good memory to be positive on which packs which. The easiest way to go about it that causes you almost no problems is just pull the furthest one in every single pack. 
this room up on the left here, you're not going to be able to do anything else other than just kind of like walk in here and drop a Consecrate or Judge and then cut back across. So you are going to end up taking some hits here. But once again, as long as you're Strafe running effectively, you're parrying, you're dodging. A lot of this stuff is just going to be rolling right off your back. So come up around the left side, go all the way around the courtyard. Make sure to get the guys in the corners because those are the ones that aren't going to pull. And then you're going to loop right back around for the kill phase. So there is going to be a little bit of damage in this kill phase. It's going to be important that you pop your trinket gets right when you start it and right when your health starts getting low it's not like strat where you really have to like work it because time is super tight and you know you want to let your health go down a little bit before you pop your trinket you can pretty much just pop it like right when they start attacking you make sure your seal of wisdom is up on something with significant health make sure you're swinging with your seal of wisdom up on the target with seal of wisdom on it if you can find hair rod in that pack or you set focus him that's a good way to do it but once again this stuff has pretty low health you're not taking a lot of damage it all dies pretty quickly and this is going to be pretty much the best xp that you can get out of all four of the instances i think just spam running armory just just for the time to XP ratio is probably the best. But uh, here's the deal. Herod, he's really just a pulling tool. You kind of just run in and grab him and then just use him to pull all the shit on the way back. You don't have to kill him if no one needs the stuff. He doesn't give you a lot of XP and he does this super annoying whirlwind the whole time. So like honestly, if you want to just kill the mobs and reset it and no one cares about the loot, no one cares about the boss loot, this part is actually probably the biggest grief of the whole instance, just sitting there waiting for the boss. And uh, when I was giving these away in vanilla, I used to have a saying. I'm not going to say it right now because it might not be YouTube safe, but we didn't kill Herod. We never killed Herod. There really aren't that many reset issues or anything like that in Scarlet Monastery Armory. It's a really quick pull and right back to the kill phase. So you're going to add about 68 mobs in under three minutes. So the Cathedral is definitely going to be the most challenging boost in here, and it's not because of the pull, it's just pretty much because of the damage. So if you do have consumes, I suggest uh, Flask of Binding Light is good, Adip's Elixir is what I'm using, it's kind of a cheaper alternative. You can use uh, Weapon Oil, like Superior Wizard Oil, as always remember to kill the first add in here, because he will kill your boosty if you don't. But other than that, it's just Sanctuary, Righteous Fury, and of course your Devotion Aura to pull. You're going to want to switch back to Sanctity Aura, but Devotion Aura to pull is always important in a pally boost when the mobs can actually do some sort of significant damage also the figurine is going to be pretty paramount during the kill phase if you're doing it this way but other than that pretty much the same rank one seal of righteousness and body pulling the body pull is more effective here but be careful because it can fail you right right there didn't work so i had to run back rank one consecrate is always going to be your most valuable pulling tool at least the best fail safe that you have but Body pulling is pretty much going to be most of what you're doing throughout the whole first part. This is what I was going to try and do in Graveyard, was just pull the whole left side and then get the boss, and then on the way back at the whole right side. In Graveyard, we had the reset issues, so you couldn't really make it work like that. Fortunately, in Cathedral, we don't have those reset issues, so we're just going to go all the way up the right side, just auto-attacking, rank 1 Seal of Righteousing, uh, rank 1 Consecrating, whatever we can. Body pulls probably would have got these guys. You probably don't have to stop there. But uh, the biggest thing for, about the trinket in this pull is you're going to want to use your bubble to open this door if you're doing it like this. So you'd probably want the bubble if you didn't have the trinket. If you've got the trinket, you're probably not going to need the bubble. But if you're doing it this way like I am, you definitely need the bubble to open that door because you're not getting it open with all those people on you. And then you're definitely going to need a swiftness pot to get out of here after you rank one seal of righteousness the boss. So instantly, right when you get through the pack, swiftness pot, freedom, you're out of there. You're going to start pulling down the left side, but you really need to use the entirety of the time that you have the swiftness potion to put as much distance between you and the mobs as you can. I kind of already screwed that up. Don't do what I did. That guy probably would have pulled anyway. This safe spot here can be used momentarily. Just get a quick heal off or not, but it's probably not worth the mana. I find that very rarely is using mana on anything other than damage worth it in pally boosting, but the safe spot is there. If you need that option, maybe have a bandage, something like that. Just don't stay up there too long. The mobs will reset if you're up there for anything more than like, I'd say six or seven seconds is probably the only safe amount of time you have. Anything after that, there's a chance for reset. It's a boost. Anything janky or glitchy can happen. It is kind of, you know, at its base, uh, 
a sort of an exploit if you think about it that way. But just to get the last few packs here, I kind of stretch a little further and take a lot of hits I don't have to. You're going to notice I actually lose my strafe and I open myself to getting hit from the back. Don't ever do that because that's what chunks my health more than anything. So I actually have to pop the trinket a little bit quickly here just so I don't risk death. Don't be afraid to pop the trinket if you think there's even a little bit of a chance that you might die because if you're going to die, nothing's worth it. Like, lay it all out, do it in two pulls, just don't die. Never die. Dying is the worst thing you can possibly do. But other than that, very, very simple. You're right there next to the boosties. They're going to get all of this XP, all of the loot, and they're going to have a good time. Guys, you can charge like 60 gold for five resets or something like this if you're just doing armory and cathedral. There may be a market to boost all four. I don't really think there is. The best XP per hour is levels 20 through 40. Scarlet, Arm uh, Scarlet Monastery Armory, Scarlet Monastery Cathedral, reset, five resets, pretty sure it's 60 gold to clear. At least that's the going rate on Pagel Ripley. After you clean up the guys that are still just casting around the corners, you're going to notice you're still in combat. That's because the second phase of the boss fight hasn't happened. If you want to go finish the boss encounter, it's all the way back up top. You can. It's going to take you about as much time as the whole pull does, I feel. It might double the time it takes to run this dungeon, so I don't think it's worth it. I always just say loot and run out. If you want to protect the boosters, I haven't seen the boss run down there and kill them, but like I'm sure, I'm sure potentially that's something that could happen if you sit there long enough looting. So just be aware that, like, Time is of the essence. You shouldn't be sitting there all day. But that is all for me, guys. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's 100% free. And check me out on twitch.tv forward slash TV. Hope this helped. Thanks a lot.